Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Kyle with Blue Ridge Firewood, and today's video is going to be all about equipment costing. We're going to go over what it costs to run a truck, a dump trailer, and a Easton made access splitter. And those costs are going to be broken down into an hourly cost, which is going to help us build later on in a video series on how to recover our overhead in our businesses. So follow along and uh, we'll go over the spreadsheet in detail. If there's any questions that you have at the end of the video, please leave a comment and I will try to answer all of the questions. If you like this type of video, please like and subscribe uh, for more content. But without further ado, we're gonna jump right into it today and we're gonna go over some formulas. Alrighty, so Jumping right into my 22 Ram 3500, uh, that is the truck that I'm currently running for my firewood business. Um, it's just a standard long bed crew cab truck. Um, again, these purchase prices in here, uh, the inflation numbers, they're not 100% accurate. They are solely for example only, um, just to give you guys a rough idea. And again, these are not my numbers. They're not what I'm charging. Uh, so t please take this only as an example. But starting off here in the top column, you can see the purchase price of the truck was $45,000. $295.18. My truck is currently upfitted with a snowplow. Um, that allows us to get in and out of our yard in the snowy season here in Pennsylvania. That snowplow had cost us a total of $8,674. So the rate of inflation here, as you can see in the notes, um, we want to add a percentage in here for future purchases. Uh, the inflation rate, I generally base this number off of the national average inflation rate. Um, as you can see here in our notes, it does say that it's usually 3 to 10% that you want to add in here. And you can change this depending on what your cost per unit comes out to be um, as needed. So right now we're going to use 8% as an example. Um, so after you add in the inflation cost, we're going to go here and we're going to look at our interest rate for our vehicle. Um, if you don't know uh, what the total interest that you're paying on your equipment is, you can do a pretty simple formula here, which is going to be the purchase price of your vehicle times the number of years of payments that you took out, times the interest rate itself, and divide that number by two. Once you type this number in here, you're going to get a grand total of the purchase, pl purchase price, including the tax, the inflation, and the interest on your loan that you currently have. Um, some of you may not have the interest cost because you decided to purchase your vehicle outright. Um, and then below that total, you're going to see a price that says sal salvage value. This salvage value is the amount you predict that you will sell your equipment for in the future after it has served its years of service for your business. <laughs> Below that, you're going to see the purchase price less the salvage value, $47,957.78 in my case. Down onto the next column here, you'll see the numbers of years. Um, numbers of years is meant um, how often do you want to replace it. In my case, I have a five-year loan out on my vehicle, and... Um, that's how long I plan to keep it. Uh, that's how long we want to keep it in service. And after those five years, we will decide to replace it or keep running it. Um, over to the right of the numbers of years, you have hours slash weeks or hours slash week. So 
as you can see here, I do have it noted. How many hours do you use this vehicle per week? In my example here, I'm going to show you that we're using the vehicle 40 hours a week. So this vehicle is solely a work truck. It gets ran Monday through Friday. Sometimes it gets ran on Saturdays. And then over into the next column, you have weeks and years. Estimate the weeks that you're going to use this truck. Um, how long is your season? Our season is 52 weeks. It's year round for us. Moving further down here, we have uh, some other costs to add into this. What does it cost to operate this vehicle in a year? The insurance can be included in this. Any license plate registration fees that you might have in your state. Here in Pennsylvania, I have my uh, truck registered as a Class 4. This truck probably could be registered higher. However, to keep the cost down for my customers and myself, I keep it at a Class 4, um, which costs me $248 a year. And I'm sure Pennsylvania has rose uh has risen this cost over the years a few times so it may be more than that it may be less of, less than that but you can also add things like pennsylvania state inspection into this number uh anything that the that you need to you that you need to buy to make this truck legal on the road um additional operating and maintenance costs per year at this point, you're going to want to estimate any fluid changes, general repairs. Um, you can find a lot of this information in your owner's manual. And if you don't have it in your owner's manual, you can go to the dealership that you bought the vehicle from. Uh, in my case, I would go to the Ram dealership and I would discuss with them the maintenance schedule for my vehicle. I would explain to them that I use it for business and they're going to determine whether that vehicle is being used under normal conditions, severe conditions, etc., which can change the maintenance costs of your vehicle. As most of you know, $400 for a diesel truck is going to be pretty low in, in most cases. Um, but again, it's just an example for the video's sake. Uh, over to the right of the insurance, license plate, and operating cost, it gives you a rough number um, for the lifetime cost of each item. So in the five years, the insurance is going to cost me $1,425 a year for this truck. The license plate uh, registration fee is going to cost me 1240 a year. And my additional operating and maintenance costs is going to uh, cost me right around $2,000 over the lifetime of the vehicle. Again, that number is going to be low, but it's an example. Uh, below that, we can include tires and tracks if you're running skid steers you, you can add the tracks in here um, oil changes if you're operating equipment that has hydraulics this section is going to be really important to you here because under oil changes you're not only going to do the engine oil but you also need to account for your hydraulic fluid changes you need to know how many you're going to do per year and also uh, you can add in here how many gallons of fuel you anticipate to use per week in this specific piece of equipment. So in our case, um, we're going to get about a half of a year out of a set of tires uh, for as much as we're operating the vehicle. We're going to do six oil changes for this year, and we're going to use approximately 60 gallons of fuel per week. Um, to the right of that, you're going to put in the, what a set of tires or tracks would cost you, what your oil changes cost you, and what the cost per gallon of fuel is. And think ahead on this, because fuel prices are always changing. 
I always anticipate this to be a little bit higher than what we're currently paying. We ran into an issue a few years back where we were charging $3.10 for a gallon of fuel and midway through the season, the price went up to almost $5 a gallon for gasoline. And that really took a burden on us and we had to go back, change all of our numbers, figure out where we were losing and adjust from there. In some cases, we had to raise costs for customers. Um, other cases, we just did a simple fuel surcharge for the meantime while the price was up. Over the right, again, it's going to break down annual costs and lifetime costs for this specific uh, category for your tires and tracks, for your oil changes, and how much you expect to spend on fuel in the lifetime of the vehicle. Down below here, you can see a summary of everything that we just went over. So the purchase price, including the interest and inflation, was $47,957.78. The life expectancy in hours for the vehicle is going to be 10400 per hour cost to replace the truck is going to be $4.61 per hour. Lifetime maintenance insurance license cost is going to be $9,415. Per hour cost to maintain, insure, and license the item is going to be $0.91 cents per hour. And fuel is going to cost you $6.38. Or six dollars and eighty three cents per hour. Moving a little further here to the right, you can see the total hour per total per hour cost of this piece of equipment, which is going to be twelve dollars and thirty five cents per hour that you need to charge for this vehicle. Over to the right, we have a column that says add one dollar an hour for labor of maintenance. So if you did notice throughout this whole project here, we didn't have any labor allowance. So we add a dollar per hour for labor maintenance. Um, this allows us to recover this over a lifetime of the vehicle over the five years. So all in all, when you break down the amount of time that it takes you to do any given job, if you're going into your wood yard and you're splitting uh, a set of rounds for one hour, you need to include this price, the $13.35. That's why it's highlighted in red. Everything that you're doing is going to add up, and you need to add the cost of every piece of equipment that you're using to do that job into each job. So from here, we're going to go over and we're going to look at the dump trailer. If you guys have any questions about this, uh, this summary, uh, the form on the truck, please feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try to answer everything that I can. So from here, let's go over to the dump trailer. All right. As you can see, we have um, our dump trailer, which is a 2000 and... 21 big tex uh, 16 by 7 dump trailer the purchase price for this dump trailer was ten thousand four hundred dollars we have a additional upfitting for that uh dump trailer we included sides taller sides on it that we made out of uh, pressure treated lumber and we also put a bed vibrator in the dump trailer to help us get more of the wood out as we were uh, dumping it for our customers. Again, as you can see in the example, we are going to use the 8% inflation. Um, total interest cost, there was no interest in this case. Um, we purchased the trailer outright, which helps with our cost per hour further down in the breakdown here. 
the salvage value of the trailer after we've used it for the total of five years is going to be three thousand uh, dollars purchase price less the salvage value is nine thousand three hundred and twelve this dump trailer get is going to be serviced service life is going to be five years and as you can see we're going to use this dump trailer 40 hours a week and 52 weeks a year so this trailer gets ran behind my truck almost every single time we leave for work in the morning. The cost to operate the trailer um, in the state of Pennsylvania here, I'm not required to hold insurance on my dump trailer as my tow vehicle does cover that. But it is not a bad idea to talk to your insurance agent and... Um, see if you can get a little extra coverage because you never know if you're out on a job site and that trailer is sitting, it gets stolen, it gets damaged from a tree falling on it, etc. You may want to have that coverage. Um, license plate costs me $12 a year for the registration. Operating costs are roughly $300 a year. And we anticipate putting tires on the trailer two times a year at a cost of $500 per set of tires the oil change frequency i haven't had to change the hydraulic fluid in the trailer yet so i am limited on data as far as the dump trailer goes if you guys have any recommendations for how often you should service your big text trailers please let me know down in the comments i'd be happy to entertain any insight on that um, as we want to keep our equipment lasting as long as we can Moving down here to the summary for the dump trailer, we're going to see that the purchase price of the dump trailer, including interest and inflation, was $9,312. The life expectancy, again, is 10,400 hours. Uh, per hour cost to replace this item is 90 cents. So what that's telling you is that you need to recover at least 90 cents for every hour that piece of equipment is working so that you can replace it. Um, that will, over the life expectancy of the vehicle, get you back up to that 9,312 so you can replace the vehicle with a like new model. And above where we added the inflation, that inflation accounts for changing times and the price of equipment going up per hour cost to maintain and insure and license the item is going to be 27 cents per hour we don't have any fuel cost per hour on this given vehicle so again the total cost per hour is going to be a dollar 17. if you're doing the maintenance on this you can again add a dollar an hour for the maintenance uh, so that would bring you up to $2.17. All in all, what we're getting out of this is we want to be charging for the truck. We want to be charging for the dump trailer. And finally, the last example that I'm going to give you here is going to be the Easton Made Access Splitter. We're also going to want to charge for this every time that we're thinking about what our wood really costs and how to break it down further into um, a manageable price per cord for our customers. So moving into the access splitter, if you get online here and you look at the current prices, the current price of the Easton made access splitter is 13,000. Here in Pennsylvania, our tax rate is 6%. So at $13,000, you are looking at $780 in taxes. We're going to, again, use that 8% inflation rate. And that brings the uh, total up to $14,882.40 with the 8% inflation. The salvage value... I'm sure you can sell the Easton Made Access for more after this. These machines are very top-notch machines, and if you maintain it properly and you maintain it as a fleet item, 
you're going to get many, many more years than what I have on this sheet out of the piece of equipment. But from a business aspect, we want to replace our equipment every five years. Uh, again, life expectancy here is going to be five years for our business. We plan to work this log splitter or have somebody running it for 40 hours per week for 52 weeks a year. We get a lot of logs in and we have to keep them processed so that we can keep our seasoned wood uh, stock up and keep selling to customers. Um, the log splitter, again, I would recommend, I would highly recommend that you put insurance on this equipment. Um, if, if your insurance company will allow you, it's going to be a very minimal cost per year for you, um, but it's not a bad idea. License plates, this vehicle here in Pennsylvania wouldn't require a license plate for us to tow it uh, in case we were to offer mobile splitting or anything like that, or even just moving it from our home down to our wood yard. Tires and tracks. Um, again, I don't have the data for this because we're not really towing it on the highway uh, for too long. Um, these, these splitters are rated to tow on the highway. So that is definitely something that you could account for if you're offering a lot of mobile splitting, etc. Um, oil changes per year. Again, this is going to solely depend on how, how often are you using the machine? How many times, uh, how frequently are you going to change the oil? In my case, as a full-time mechanic, if... Uh, Briggs & Stratton recommends that I change the oil every 100 hours. Under good faith, I'm going to change that oil every 50 hours just to ensure that that vehicle is being maintained to the highest that it can be. As far as fuel goes, we're estimating that we would use roughly 10 gallons per week the cost of fuel right now in our area is going to be $373 per gallon. So that's going to be a total annual cost of $1,939 a year in fuel. And over five years, it's going to cost us $9,698. So with that said, this brings us down to the summary. Um, the purchase price here that you are seeing to the left is going to include the interest and the inflation minus the salvage cost. That's going to be how much you will be able to get back out of it uh, after it's sold and that you'll be able to use to replace the equipment. Life expectancy on this machine, with us using it for five years, we, we fully expect to get 10,400 hours out of this machine. Now, that doesn't mean that the motor might last that long. Um, it doesn't mean that you're not going to have to replace parts in those 10,000 hours. Um, it would be great if every piece of equipment lasted for 10,000 hours, but it's not always a reality. And who knows, Easton Made has been making an awesome product, so they may just last 10,000 hours. Um, the Per hour cost to replace this item is going to be $0.95 cents per hour. The lifetime maintenance, insurance, and license cost is going to be $1,000 per year. Or, yes, per year. Um, the per hour cost to maintain, insure, and license the item is going to be $0.10 cents per hour. Fuel is going to run you about $0.93 cents per hour. And again, this is dependent on how much fuel you're actually using um, over the length of one hour. Or one week, I'm sorry, over one week. So if you're using 12 gallons per week, this number is going to go up. And I can show you here because this document will uh, update live. So we had 10. Let's just change this to a larger number and say that we're going to use 50 gallons per week. When we do that, you can see that our fuel cost per hour jumped up to 
$4.66 per hour. And the total per hour cost took a jump and went to $5.71 per hour. Now you need to add in your time for maintaining this equipment. Um, as it is downtime, it's not productive, uh, productive time. You're not making money by doing maintenance. You're just making sure that your equipment's running properly so you can continue to do business. So that charge again is gonna be $6.71. All right, guys, I know that was a lot of information to go over in one short video. Um, I hope I was able to help you out understanding the cost of your equipment or at least some of your equipment that you may use. Um, you can add as much equipment to these formulas as you want. You can break it down into your chainsaws, your chains, uh, etc. I just did it with the vehicle, the dump trailer, and a log splitter to keep it simple and keep it short. But I think it does give a good understanding and whatnot of where where these numbers can be and how quickly these, these can add up. Um, this can really help you in seeing where you, where you potentially could be losing money. Um, if you have any more questions about it, please comment below. Um, we're open to constructive cr criticism with these uh, spreadsheets as well. If you have a better method that you prefer to use, let us know down in the comments what it is, and I'd be happy to take a look at it and see if it's something that can work for us and, uh, you know, go from there.